Each season, summer, fall, and winter, spring, the loft schedules a huge variety of writing classes. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce a teaching artist who teaches in multiple genres, Nicole Kronzer. Nicole, could you introduce yourself and tell us how you got involved at the loft? Yes, thank you, Savannah. Uh, my name is Nicole Kronzer, and I am a high school English teacher and an author of young adult literature and a former professional actor and improviser. Um, I got connected with The Loft because I knew Jennifer Dodgson because she used to work with my husband a million years ago. Um, and we were at like a party like ages and ages ago, decades, you know, president, entire presidents ago. And, um, <laughs> and she said, oh yeah, I'm leaving this job and I'm, and I'm taking this job at The Loft. And then my eyes lit up because I knew about The Literary Loft but, um, and I always wanted to be an author, but I really thought from a, you know, from a very young person up, I thought that you had to live in New York City. Like it was just like one of those childhood things that never got <laughs> corrected, you know? But I was like, oh, authors all live in New York City. I don't live there. I'm from Wisconsin, therefore I can't be an author. And so, but then when Jenny was like, oh yeah, Nicole, you should just write this book that, you know, cause I said, oh, I really think, I feel like I've got this young adult book inside me. And she was like, oh my gosh, just write the book. And so then, you know, that really like opened the door, right? Into thinking about the loft. And then because I'm a high school English teacher and I teach creative writing, she was very interested in having me teach uh, teen writing classes. And so I started off doing that. And then, um, then she found out I knew how to use Scrivener, which is this you know, novel writing software. And so then I started teaching the Scrivener classes. And so now I teach, and then once I got published, then I started teaching some adult writing classes too. So I love the loft. Um, it, it, it really feels, it feels like my literary home. And a lot of the classes that you teach are about like craft and process as well as different tools that you can use. And so how do you see all of these different topics that you teach about coming together? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, and I say this to my high school students in my creative writing classes that, you know, like creative writing is an art, right? Like, and art is very difficult to teach, but art has science in it too. And it has tools and it has, I think about like the tent poles, right? Like when I write a book, I think about like staking up all these tent poles first to then sort of hang the art, which is like, I don't know, the, the actual tent of the story on these tent poles. And so that's what I that's what I feel like I can do. What I can teach is like, you know, here's well just for like with Scrivener, you know, like here's this computer program that will help get this nebulous thing in your brain into something that's that's really, you know, that, that can help you sort of handle it, you know, and and I, you know, I say it's a little bit like, um, like Dumbledore in the pensive, you know, where you take the ideas out and you put them in the pensive and then you can see your thoughts, right? And that's what Scrivener does. And I think that the more aware we are of like the science behind the writing, then it lets our brains free up for the art part, if that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. And conceptually, you've explained what your classes all sort of revolve around, but on a more concrete level, what is it that you want students to take away? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I don't know if it's, if it's terribly concrete what I want them to take away. I, I think what I want, I want them to feel um, that they have more tools in their toolbox. I want them to feel empowered and I want them to feel excited. So I, I don't know if any of that is terribly concrete, but um, but that is what I want. I want it's more of a feeling, right? Like I want them to feel like they can do this, and I want them to feel like they have resources and that they're not alone. Because boy, writing can be such a lonely, you know, a lonely thing to do, and it's a thing that without a community, you you could quit a million times. And everything is more important than writing, <laughs> you know, when you're like laundry, children, I don't know, mail, bills, exercise. I mean, there's just like, you can constantly, you can always justify doing something ahead of your writing. For so long, it felt just like this thing I was doing for me. And inherently that felt so selfish. Um, and so I, I guess what I, I guess I just want people to know that like, it's not, it's not selfish and <laughs> that this is, this is something worth prioritizing and, and that you can prioritize it. And for the whole like list of classes that you you know teach every single year 
what is it that really inspires those classes and slash or what is it that you get really excited about bringing into the classroom? I just really feel, I mean, you know, like, I think particularly when I teach adults, um, but also so with teenagers that like, I'm just kind of like bringing the ball, you know, and then we all just play together. Um, and that like, I come in with an agenda and, you know, readings or like whatever, right? But, you know, here's everybody's, I don't know, I'm actually a terrible team sport player, um, really bad hand-eye coordination, but, you know, like, here's your racket and here's all the things and now let's all play because I feel like I learned so much, not I'm not just like the bringer of information, right? But like that I, that I learned so much. I mean, I, you know, I don't have an undergrad, I have an undergrad in theater. And when I came to the high school that I teach at, you know, they were like, hey, will you teach creative writing? And I was like, yes, but I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> really. And, and so when I looked at students writing and was trying to figure out how to make it better, it also made my writing better. And so really like the classes that I that I propose at the loft are often like, oh, I'm really struggling with the beginnings of stuff. Oh, I'll, I'll propose something called strong starts. And then we can all learn about the strong beginnings together, um, you know, or like um, I uh, have this tendency to write a lot of dialogue and a lot less interiority into my writing. And that is something that I really have to pull out of it. And so it's like, oh, something about balancing all the different parts of writing, that would be good for me to work on. And that's really, so it's like, it's really just a, an assessment of either like my students writing, what, what do they need help with? And then, you know, and it's also like my writing, like, what do I need to be working on? And so ultimately maybe it's a little selfish, but I mean, it's, it's just fun to be along for the ride. Like last week's class, um, you know, we had this, this great conversation and I, and at the end, I was like, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> and that's, that's how I feel. Well, speaking of your own writing, first of all, I see your beautiful book cover on the shelf behind you. There's my girl. I love that illustration style. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? This is Lisa Smith and uh, Lisa White. Oh my God, I always miscredit her because it's just such a common name, right? You know, Lisa White, she is my hero. I hope she is my uh, book illustrator forever. <laughs> and so speaking of your own writing, you write YA, uh, and I know that you dabble in some other age groups as well. What really inspires your writing? Um, so I heard Kate DiCamillo speak once, and she said she gets the question, how do you tap into the, you know, like, how do you, do you surround yourself with eight-year-olds and 10-year-olds? Like, what do you do to write like that age? And she's like, oh man, like that eight-year-old lives inside me. I can tap into what it felt like to be eight all the time. And, and then when I heard her say that, I was like, oh, minus 17. Like there's just, for whatever reason, I don't know, trauma, or if it was just, I don't know what, but there is just something that I can tap into being 17 without any effort. And so <laughs> I don't know if there's just part of me that's like arrested as a 17 year old and I never grew up past that or what, but that is just like an age that, um, I, like, I just really, like, I'm very in touch with how it feels to be that age. And plus, those are my people, right? Like, I love teenagers, and I love teaching them. And so being surrounded by teenagers and the things they say to each other and how they talk and what concerns them and what they're confident about and their hopes and dreams. And I, you know, I say this to them that, like, they're ultimately, there is so, there is so much hope in a teenage classroom about the future because there's so much future for them. And it makes me feel like I get to have a future, too. And it's just intoxicating to be around them. And so that's why it's just such a natural fit for me, I think. It's a combination of like who, who, who lives in my brain and then also who I'm around. Um, yeah, that's why, it's my, that's why it's my sweet spot. And you spend a lot of your time writing or teaching writing or talking about writing, <laughs> everything that goes into writing. But when you're not doing that, and this is sort of a two-pronged question since we are currently in COVID land, what do you really like to do? Um, so I've been a knitter for a really long time. And I'm just looking around here to see if there's anything. Oh, yeah, man, I got stuff for days. Um, you know, like I, I knit a lot. That is, it's basically like therapy or knitting, right? And knitting, I can take on. Yeah, so um, and slots of sweaters and things. I just don't know. Oh, here's a, Jill. Yeah, so I knit a lot. Um, but also recently, and this was only maybe three or four years ago, I sort of discovered running 
And so now I run a lot. Um, like I run like, I don't know, 15 miles a week now. And this is again, you know, I just said like, I'm not a team sports person. I did not grow up identifying as an athlete at all. And so it was really like just recently that a friend of mine was like, Hey, let's go for a run. And I was like, Oh, that's not a thing I do. And, uh, and he was like, no, let's, let's, let's go. Let's, let's just do it. And I tell you what, it's been marvelous. So actually I've been able to do both of those things in a pre COVID and a current COVID and, and well into the post COVID, um, world is both mostly those are like, if I, if I have hobbies, those are the two things that I do. And I always dream of cooking someday and I like kind of dabble occasionally, but then I just get too hungry. You know, I don't know. I don't know. There's other people. I, I, I grew up with a mom who really loved to cook. And then now I'm married to somebody who really loves to cook. I'm just super spoiled that way. <laughs> but I, it's like on the list, right? Of like someday I want to be known as somebody who's just like, oh, I really hope Nicole brings that chicken pot pie. I don't know. I love that you picked a very, very Midwestern thing to cook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It should be something fancy, right? You can take the girl out of Wisconsin, but you yeah. know. <laughs> Exactly. That's what they say. I mean, why, why ruin other people's joy if they love to cook for you? That's true. That's just such a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, for our last question of this lovely interview, I would really just like to hear about how, how the literary arts really resonates with you. And this can be in like multiple different avenues of your life. Um, you know, I think the word escape comes to mind, both as a reader and as a writer. Um, you know, during this year of COVID, like I have gone into the writing, like I can't, what is the past tense of dove? I have, I have dived, I guess. I always want to say doven and that is wrong. Um, but I've really like, it feels like it should be Dovin, um, but I've really gone in deep, you know, into the writing because I could completely control what happened there. And I was entirely in charge of what people said and how they felt and what happened. And it was very, very calming um, and therapeutic. And then, you know, the reading also as an escape, it takes me into places that I've never been and gives me experiences that I've never had. And we all know science tells us, but we as writers and readers already knew that reading makes us more empathetic. You know, it just makes us nicer people. Um, and so I think those things are great, whether it's, you know, an escape for like stilling my, my brain or whether it's an escape, like expanding my world. Um, I, that's, that's why, that's why reading and writing is so important to me. But I think ultimately that whole, you know, um, just to, our brains are a little bit stupid, you know, and they don't realize that if you are reading a book, they don't, the same part of your brain lights up when you do that, that lights up when you're spending time with actual friends. And so you read and you, you think those people are really your friends, right? And this is why we like laugh out loud at, words on a page or we fall in love with fictional characters or we cry or you know what I mean or we're like bereft when things happen um and because we think that <laughs> our brain thinks those are really our friends and so I don't know I just there's it, probably never been a time where it's more important um as reading and writing they've just never been more important to make this world you know nicer no absolutely I think that is uh spot on and I think the escapism is spot on too, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for being here with us today. And for all of our viewers, you can find Nicole's classes as well as our full winter spring lineup by visiting laugh.org slash classes. Nicole, I'm really excited for the whole variety of classes you'll be teaching. Thank you so much, Savannah. It was such a pleasure to talk to you.